Here's Michelle from Made by Michi. Thanks for joining me today. Today I'm going to be making three cards using the April subscription box from the Hedgehog Hollow. This month's box is masculine themed, so it's filled with lots of goodies to make masculine themed cards for all those men in your life. The stamp set that I'm going to be using from the box is called Men at Play. It is filled with three fun leisure themed activity stamps, images, and some sentiments that coordinate with each of them. And then I'm going to be using the three stencils that came in the box. The first one is called Tea Time, Lure Me In, and then we have Tool Time. And then I'm also going to be using the coordinating pack of r, &R Ephemera from the box. So, so to start off my card, I cut down three pieces of cardstock to 4.5 by 5.75 inches. It They are a little bit bigger than my finished card size, but in the end I will just cut them down to the appropriate size and they will be perfect. So to start with my first one, I grabbed two different colors of Distress Oxide inks. One is Cracked Pistachio and the other one is Pine Needles. And I just went in with the two different colors starting on either side, blending in towards the middle till I had, excuse me, until I had a nice soft transitional blend of the two colors. I wasn't too concerned if it wasn't completely a, a completely perfect blend because I was going to be going back over them with the stencils in the end and it didn't bother me too much if it wasn't perfect. So for my ink blending, I decided to try my Misty because the Misty is magnetic. So I removed the foam insert and the paper from it and I put my card bases in there and tried to do some ink blending with that instead of getting my fingers all inky and leaving marks on the ink, to, the ink blending. And as well, a post-it does work. It does help to protect your fingers, but I find that the paper does move around quite a bit with the post-it. So I decided to try, try it with the Misty and the Magnets. It actually did work quite, quite well. The paper did still move around a little bit, but significantly less than it normally does, <clears throat> excuse me, with the post-its. But if you do use this, just make sure that you do wipe off the magnets in between going from one color to the next so you don't transfer any of the dark ink onto a lighter area or vice versa. But it actually did work out really well. I was quite happy with this. So again, with my next one, I used Stormy Sky and Speckled Egg Distress Oxide inks. And I just went in from either end with both of the inks till I had a nice blend in the middle of the two. And I did in between my ink pan was going from one to the next. I did wipe off any ink that was on the Misty, so I didn't transfer any of that ink onto my next, my next panel. And so for my third one, I used regular Distress inks for this, and I grabbed a few more colors than I did for the other ones. This was going to be the water one. And so I grabbed five, six, dif five different blues, excuse me. I used a mix of Salty Ocean, Mermaid Lagoon, Faded Jeans, Blueprint sketch and chip sass, chipped sass, sapphire. And then I did add a green in there. I added pine needles in the end. So contrary to the other two, I did start my ink blending all in the exact same spot for this one because it was going to be for the fishing one, for the water, all bodies of water, lakes, whatever, all deeper, darker at the bottom of it. So I wanted it to be darker at what, which would be the bottom of my cardstock and fading to lighter at the top. So that's exactly what I did. It went dark at the bottom because that's where I started all of my, my ink blending. So you would have more ink at the bottom and it would be lighter at the top because you'd have less ink on your brush at the top. And in the end, I went back in with some pine needles or the blues to give it a nice, to deepen it a bit. And actually the pine needles over top of these blues worked out really, really well. It wasn't anything anything drastic or severe, but it just darkened it up and gave it a nice a nice greeny blue teal color, deep deep teal over the blue, which worked really nice for, for the water. And this one in particular, I really wasn't concerned if the ink blending wasn't perfect because in the end, I was going to do some ink smushing and adding some water to it. So instead of cleaning off the ink, I added a little bit more ink to the Misty sprayed some water and smushed my paper in it. And I absolutely love how that one turned out. So there's my three card bases. I set them aside to dry for a little bit. Uh, for the stencil, I always put a piece of 
um, printer copy paper underneath. It just makes cleanup a lot easier because the paper, I can just throw it in the end. And I don't have to worry about, worry about having a uh, messy work surface from the transfer gel. So I just took my three panels. I placed these stencils over the panels exactly how I wanted them. Taped it down with some, some repositional tape on the back so the stencils stayed in place and added my transfer gel over top of them. And I did try it first with my baking scraper thingy, whatever that's called, to see if I could get a little more even blend and more of the gel on there at first in one go, but I didn't quite like how that worked out. So I went back to my trusty old metal spatula and I, and I was much happier with how that, with how that turned out. Now I do have a pan of water off to the side that I put all my stencils in immediately after I was done with them to make cleanup of them a lot easier. Because if you let the transfer gel dry on your stencil, it is very, very hard to get it off. So with a pan of water, it just keeps the transfer gel nice and, and wet, if you want to call it that. So it makes cleanup a lot easier. So once I had all of my gel on them, I set them all aside to dry. For probably for a good two hours, I let them dry. And they were perfect. So I used four different foils on them. I used an emerald watercolor and a holographic silver star for my blue fish one. For my tea time, I used a black. And for my tool time, I used a regular silver. And I absolutely love how these turned out. For the first one for the fish, because I did want the seaweed to have the emerald watercolor, I did have to cut my foil apart a bit and just attach it with the purple tape. The purple tape goes through the mink perfectly fine. It does not tear your paper. It does not stick to your paper. It leaves no sticky residue. It goes through perfectly fine. So I added my foil to my pieces, sent it through my mink, and then I added the silver and the black to the other two pieces off camera. And then once they were all done, I set them aside to cool for about 10 seconds before I revealed, before I peeled off my foil. And I love how they turned out. Now for my ephemera, there's some really, really nice um, coordinating ephemera, leisure activity for tools and fishing and golf that are in this pack that coordinate perfectly with the rest of the box. And if you're a scrapbooker as well, these ephemera will be perfect for any layouts that you, that you do. So they're really, really fun to have. So for my sentiments, I grabbed three. I grabbed Happy Father's Day. You're the one for me and thanks for building me up. They all match perfectly. They all match perfect with my stenciled backgrounds. And I love the two that, that have the puns in them. You're the one for me and thanks for building me up. So I grabbed my Misty, stamped up my three different sentiments using the Maker Forte Color Hide Remarkable ink in Eclipse Black. This ink is a really nice crisp black. You get a nice, nice black, yeah, nice crisp image off the, off the get-go, off the first try. But I did use my Misty just in case I didn't stamp it properly. I could go back again, I could go back in again with it and stamp it over again, but I didn't need to because they were perfect the first time. So I cut down all of my sentiments that went with my stencil backgrounds and for my to assemble my cards, I added some foam tape to each of my stenciled backgrounds and added each of the two pieces of ephemera. I glued them directly to my card base and situated them so they would be underneath my sentiment. And then I just popped up my sentiments using some foam dots. And I absolutely love, I love the stencil backgrounds just as they are with the sentiment, but these pieces of ephemera, they just add a little bit of, a little extra fun to them and that little bit extra. So they worked out perfectly. I absolutely love how these cards turned out. The foil looks absolutely amazing on these backgrounds and that blue, I love how adding the water, the ink smushing with the, with the water on this dressings, it, it looks amazing. But I love how all three of these turned out. On two of them, I did get a little bit of the transfer gel that seeped underneath the stencil, but not gonna bother me too much. Not too worried about it. I love how these cards turned out. They're perfect for any men in your life or even any women 
that that love golfing, fishing, building things and being handy. They're perfect for for more than just men. So I added them all to my card bases. I have two top folding and one side folding card bases from 110 pound heavyweight cardstock. And I absolutely love how these cards turned out. They are perfect for Father's Day, perfect for birthdays. This box and all of the contents in it, all the masculine themes, stamps, and images are fantastic. So that's it for my cards today. Thank you so much for joining me. I'd love to hear down in the comments which one is your favorite. And as always, hit don't forget to hit that like button, comment, subscribe, share. And thank you so much. I appreciate you stopping by. And until next time, thanks. Bye.